Hello, class. We are joined by Caitlin Schindler. Uh, she is the Assistant Athletic Director for Facilities and Operations at Texas A&M University. Uh, she began her career as a student manager as a student at Texas A&M, uh, working for multiple teams in the athletic department. Uh, she then was a graduate assistant at University of Texas San Antonio, working in their athletic department uh, before making her return to A&M uh, in their facilities and events department. Uh, Caitlin then moved a little further west over to Stanford University as the Assistant Athletic Director for Facilities over at Stanford. Um, over there, she oversaw a staff of six, uh, and she played an integral role in organizing and relocating the department um, in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, she also helped with the oversight of 22 facilities uh, at Stanford. Uh, after the year, she took an opportunity that she couldn't refuse uh, to head back to Texas A&M as the Assistant AD for Facilities and Operations over there. Uh, in her current role, she oversees a staff of two full-time employees and about 20 part-time employees, uh, also helping oversee day-to-day -day operations and facility maintenance, as well as future projects within athletics. Uh, so everybody give a warm welcome to Caitlin Sch Schindler. Hello, Caitlin. Howdy. Hey, welcome. Thanks for taking the time. We appreciate you speaking to our class. Uh, it's an intro to sport facility and event management. I love it. Wagner College. Um, so yeah, so I guess just to get started, uh, if you want to describe how you got started working in sports. So when let's let's kick it back to I was 18. I knew I wanted to do something in college athletics. Uh, I wasn't really sure what that looked like and I stumbled upon this um, this degree program called sport management here at AM. And I'm like, oh that's cool. Like I love sports. I like the business side of things. It was a happy little married couple there. Um, so dove into all of that and throughout my man as a student manager when I was in school, um, I really got to dive into every little bit and piece because I met our then senior associate AD of, of facilities, Kevin Hurley, um, when I was a freshman. Um, and he oversaw everything, capital projects, all the day-to-day. -day. And so I just kept in touch with him. Um, he really showed me where, um, but let's, let's go look at everything. Like I shadowed maintenance, I shadowed custodial, I shadowed, um, at the time we had, um, uh, we had concessions with, um, uh, like in-house. And so I literally saw it all. And then I was like, okay, I want to go do, uh, I want to be a director of ops. And so like, that was my goal, fully knowing that facilities was going to be somewhere in my, in my future. So graduate, go to UTSA. I get more facility experience there. So that was really awesome. Got my master's. That was, was a great little gig too. Um, but there I learned what it was like to be at a smaller school. So at the time, UTSA was, was still growing quickly. Um, they went to Conference USA pretty recently. Uh, so it was, it was still all very new over there. And um, just seeing that, hey, hey, what do I need to do with this very small budget? What do I need to do to get something done? And I got to do it myself, myself, two other GAs and two full-time people. What can we do to keep everything going? So that was a really good way for me to, um, I don't know, just change the way I thought. Uh, coming back to a and uh, I, I was doing a dual role. So Kevin Hurling called me back. Um, at the time, our staff was Whenever I got hired, it was Kevin, TJ, Scott, me. So there's five total full-time. And we had about, I don't know, 15 students, maybe. And so we were trying to figure out, like, what does this new shape look like? We have a brand new facility or a newly renovated football stadium. Um, we need to host uh, special events, so external um, events within our facility. So that's what my main role was. But then we also have buildings across campus that we have to split up amongst five people. So my first start was with uh, our tennis facility, which is, is one of our facilities that needs the most help. Uh, it was, I learned throughout those uh, couple of years, few years managing tennis, um, that it was the, 
landscape that it was built on was a landfill. Nice. That's great. And like, awesome. So our foundation is pretty rocky. Um, so that actually helped me a lot over there too, to learn, okay, I, I, I don't have control over how this place was built, but I have control over the outcomes I can do right now. Okay. So I can paint a door, paint, put lipstick on a pig actually helps a lot sometimes. Um, but then, okay, I need to find the source. Why are, why are we having these leaks? Why, why does this continue to break? Why does this always happen at every three months? You know, so having a building that was in essence struggling, it made me ask more questions. So that was really awesome. But then I was also doing a ton of stuff over at football stadium because that's where we were running events. And so I really had to, I had to answer to who is my now boss, Scott Obergefell. Um, he was running the stadium at the time and uh, he, he would ask me questions. Hey, why, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? And I'm like, man, I, why are you asking? <laughs> <laughs> and so then I had to sit down and I understood the why he explained the why Caitlin like this is my building I need to know what's going on and if you're doing x y and z I that we what you do and what I do merge together so much so um that's kind of been like in, in short that's been my start like I was a student I was like oh cool there's a job with the swim team mm -hmm. uh, why not you know, like I wanted at the time, I really wanted to know any and all sport. Like, yeah, I know, I know what swimming is. I know what strokes they do, but I, at that time, I really learned how to, um, how to manage a team because I was helping out our director of ops. I was helping out both of our head coaches. Like that was my start. And I was like, okay, I think this is what I want to do. And then as the years went on and the people that I interacted with, it was you no, know, like, that's that's not what I want to do and that's okay but I learned so much from it so that's kind of like how I got started yeah and I think it's important that during these internships you find out more of what you don't want to do as opposed to what you do want to do absolutely and we're all in the same boat it's the same with me and my first gig in sports was an internship in minor league baseball yeah. and after that I knew I never wanted to work in baseball ever again yeah you know like dancing on dugouts is fun um but it's a lot it's a lot and I I it takes a special person to oh yeah do it and I have friends who work in baseball and they love they it, love it. It's, <laughs> not, it's not for me <laughs> yeah. but it's awesome that you mentioned that it's you found out what you didn't want to do mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to and find out what you don't want to do solidifies a little more of what you do want to do yes Yes. But then you can also take so much of what you learned, even though the job you don't like is it, it, you don't like it. And you're like, man, it sucks coming to work every day. But it's like, okay, well, you got to flip your head, flip, flip the script on it. Okay. What am I getting out of it? Mm -hmm. And then how, how can I utilize the skills I am learning or what can I learn not to do? Exactly. You can't make it like, oh, this suck. You can't. No. And I mean, we all like, that's part of life too. Like we all have our, have our lows. Um, and that's what makes it hard, but having a very solid foundation in your head, um, and know your why, like that's been the hardest thing for me to write down mm -hmm. is my why. And it's changed and evolved, but it, it does help. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, kind of leading into the job now, like what, what is your day-to-day operations what what do you do Monday through Friday and even on the weekends <laughs> everything <laughs> so we uh we, the staff size we have now had is what I would have dreamt of um you know four years ago mm -hmm. so we now have um Scott myself hold on I gotta count for really a second <laughs> Scott David Omar. we have at least 15 people let's go with that <laughs> yeah I, I look at the staff directory and it never ends <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, but like, it's so great. It's so great because like, just to take a side tangent real quick, like it's, it's so cool to see where we were mm -hmm. and where we are now, because yeah. there was, there were times where Scott, let's just use him for an example. When he was running the football stadium, he also ran softball and baseball. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, y'all, this stadium is massive. Yeah. Like, I, the stadium is over a hundred thousand people. Yeah. 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 exactly and I mean seriously to this day I'll be driving with uh, from across the railroad tracks and we'll I'll look across and, and whoever I'm with I'm like man forget how big it is mm -hmm. like, you, you really do and 
And so he was really getting stretched thin. I was getting stretched thin because I was working on tennis and EBC and events. And like, we were all stretched so thin. So like now it's, you're not taking a break, but you can take a, a deep breath and be like, okay, we got this. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows what they're doing and they have their job and they are like accelerating at that. They're not trying to be average at what their job is. They're trying to actually you know, hone in on what's theirs and what they own. Um, so that was a side tangent, but yeah, it's, it's, it's so nice to see our staff and the size that we're at now. Um, so my day to day, um, I'm, I'm mainly focused on what's our daily operation. So making sure that, um, before we hit our debrief at four 30 each day, Hey, what is our student staff looking like? Um, where are they going? Like right now we're, um, we're hiring for an administrative coordinator. So like this person is going to be doing a lot of the smaller things that I do. So making sure the students are in line where they need to go. I have, um, two of my, two of my other coworkers, they're the ones, um, you know, making sure that the schedule is right, but I need to make sure, Hey, are we having any issues? Like I got to check into that. Like that still is under my purview because we tell our students all the time, if it wasn't for them, we couldn't do our jobs. Exactly. We just straight up couldn't. Mm-hmm. And they roll their eyes and I'm like, no, you have no idea. Oh, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. We could literally not do what, uh, what we're doing right now. And so, um, you know, it's, it's making sure that, Hey, what's our, what's our larger, what's our big scope, you know, 10,000 foot view. What's, what's our vision going forward. And I'm still working on that. And I, I can't, I can't lie there. Like I'm, I'm very much so a, a super detailed person mm-hmm. um, and needing to like say, okay, here, you take what I was doing and you run with it. Like that's, it takes a lot. Yeah. And, but that's what we got to learn. You got to learn as you're growing. Like this is only my second year in this title, I guess, but there's still so much I'm learning with that because um I need to delegate more, but then I need to, so, because it, in order for me to delegate, I can actually do my job. I can step back. I can look and I go, okay, this is where our department is going. This is what Scott has tasked me to do and where we're moving forward that way. So we need to look at our, I need to make sure that everybody understands what we're doing with our building access because that impacts every single person in our apartment. What does our student staff look like? Because our student staff helps us which then in turn helps the rest of the department. Um, are we staying safe? I actually, I actually implemented uh, a security shift that I took from Stanford uh, because uh, what is it? What is his name? Is John? James. 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 Uh, uh, I was like, James did this, so I'm like, well, why are we? We're not going to do the the time frame that James does, but uh, I mean, wait a couple hours, just go quick check. So it's like the like that little thing that. Um, that we didn't have before and mm-hmm. has, has actually helped us a ton in the year that we've been doing it. So it's how, where, where do, where are we having some issues and finding solutions for those? But overall, my, my weekly calendar is different <laughs> all the time. Yeah. I'm making sure that uh, I'm hitting all of our facilities at least once a month. Um, I got to hit my facility, you know, as many times as I can, mm-hmm. but uh, it involves a lot of facility walks, uh, making sure that everybody in our department is, um, everybody within the facilities department mm-hmm. is following the same standard. We, we want to hit the same standard and then exceed it. So um, yeah, all of our, not so, we're going away from manuals mm-hmm. kind of, but we still need to know what, what is our standard operating procedures, our SOPs. Mm-hmm. So we're, um, we're trying to like re revision that because it's not what it was when we had five people mm-hmm. running the facilities. Now we have 15. Yeah. Okay. What does that look like? Um, so kind of needing to dive into those details that I love. I love those details. Um, so diving into that. And then again, right now I'm, I'm, since we're down a person, I'm, really in the weeds on our student staff and our building access stuff because we have issues with that all the time keyless building keys were fine but keyless is, is, ca- card card readers are great until they fail 
until they fail. And bio readers are great until they fail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anything that that we need to document, that we need to remember for future days, like that's where my mind is solely focused. But then also like, how do I need to support my staff? Yeah. So I guess you guys kind of touch on that. Which facility or facilities do you currently oversee? I oversee our football operation buildings. Um, so right now we turned our bright football complex um, into solely a football building. We removed academics and the student services. Um, so right now bright is partially under renovation mm -hmm. and we've had to relocate them. So like I'm still overseeing those people which are actually being housed in our football stadium. So thankfully I do know, understand and know how the football stadium operates. So that's helped a ton. Um, so I have our football operations building, the football weight room, uh, Davis Player Development Center. And then hoping by August, September, we have our indoor, tra uh, indoor football up and running. So I'll have all of those. And then we're in the progress of groundwork and foundation, all of those um, sub surface items for our new academic and wellness center. When's that uh, scheduled to be built? 25, 2025, something like that. I'm sure yeah, it's it a big building too. Um, It won't be as big because it'll literally just be a nutrition center and okay. um, tutors, tut uh, tutor rooms, mm -hmm. labs, studies, all like offices. It's going to be that type of building. So it won't be as big. Yeah. Compar compared compared to a hundred thousand seat stadium, yeah, it shouldn't be that big. Seat but stadium. but <laughs> it'll still. I feel like when looking at the school, especially the the SEC schools, mm -hmm. you know, everything is life is like supersized. Yeah, um, and south. So, so when you're saying compared compared to the one supersized building, it's still going to be a good sized building <laughs> yes. compared to every other school in the country. Yes, yes, and <laughs> like this is actually adding square footage. So like we're trying to figure that out, like. Do we need to, whenever this building does come online, like, does that go to a person currently on staff? Do I continue to hold it? Like, does it make sense for me to have it? Like, it's a brand new building. Why not let someone else own up another piece of real estate, you know? So yeah, and that, that's a huge staffing question that happens yeah. often in, in this industry is you have a set amount of staff, but if you're mm -hmm. going to expand new mm -hmm. buildings, who, mm -hmm. who oversees? So like, when I was at UC Davis, uh, working there, we added equestrian and beach volleyball. That's two new facilities, but yep. still the same number of staff. Uh, they were building a football facility for uh, practice and weight room and mm -hmm. ended up hiring a full-time employee to oversee that 20,000 square foot building. You know, you, those are the little things you don't really think about. Right. That's what I tell people when they ask, like, what's my job? Like, what do you do? Yeah. And I'm like, the things you don't think about to make sure a building doesn't fall down, is safe, and is ready for an event, that's my job. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that that magic wand where things get fixed, there's, yeah. there's a person behind that. Bibbidi bobbidi boo, all done. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of tailing from the facility side. What's your role with events? So right now we are actually split. Um, event management and facilities are now separated. So very similar to what you, similar to what you have over at Stanford right now, mm -hmm. um, to where Keith and his team, like everything top to bottom, setup, breakdown, all yeah. that, that's event. Mm -hmm. And then anything that is, uh, you know, your Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. general things need to get fixed, something broke um renovations like that's the facility side but um right now we don't we don't report to the same deputy ad right. um so we have two different ones and then those two go to ross um so right now it's it's a little different um we're gonna see what football looks like this year uh because we're we're still gonna assist with with uh setup but in year 24 we may not be doing that anymore so there's a lot of that conversation that um, is still being had by our senior admin mm -hmm. on uh, what makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as long as their vision and their reasoning is explained to us, I mean, we'll do whatever they want. We yeah. just need to know what the direction, you know. Um, but as it pertains to football, this is this will be the second season 
that we have three people on staff that have ran the facility themselves. So Scott, my boss, myself, and then Cody Wood, who actually runs uh, the stadium now. He's doing an amazing job. Um, like now it's like, okay, what makes the most sense for the three of us to be utilized the most? Mm -hmm. um, how can we utilize every single full-time staff person? Mm -hmm. Like, what do we need to do? Like the, we're, I know Scott, Cody, and I talk quite a bit on, hey, like what makes sense? And, and so right now we're kind of shifting that um, to where it's, you know, do we just need to be on call? Mm -hmm. um, like what, as a, outside of football, because football is its own totally mm -hmm. different event. There's so much that goes on. Mm -hmm. um, so like for every other sport that we have, like, are we just on call? Mm -hmm. Or do we just tell you who your main person is? So we're trying to currently figure that out. For sure. So yeah. it's very different than what I'm very, what I'm used to. Oh, of course. And I think for, for the class, working at a bigger school, you have that separate department for events and separate for facilities but it mm -hmm. working with majors and fcs mm -hmm. schools uh or smaller fbs schools facilities and events do a lot of the same stuff right because they do they do coincide they like when it was just when we were when we were under the same umbrella like that's what we did people would laugh they're like are you being a stanchion nazi i'm like yes yes <laughs> i am that stanchion is two inches to the left make it straight like but that's what we focused on we we when, let's let's go back in time to when I ran the stadium or whenever Scott was running the stadium and I was just helping. We literally would get to anywhere from 28 to 32 miles a day because we yeah. get here eight hours before yeah. game, eight hours before kick. Game would happen. That's four hours. Stay another three ish hours after. You know, we've we've packed in a full day. Okay. And I mean, we would walk, we still walk, but we walk whole stadium. And throughout the game, we had our facility assistants, they would manage our students. Okay, all right, out at uh, eight minutes in the first quarter, you gotta go do this. We had a whole list and we've constantly been evolving that timeline. Um, so it went from very, very minimal things. And I was like, oh man, we forgot about that. Add that to the list. And then every year, um, and usually like around February or so after the stadium's broken down, um, you, you know, as you revamp it, you, that's what you use to get you going for the next football season. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've, we have dialed that in to the minute. So with that, it was, what do we need to do to get things ready to bring people in? Is everything safe? Why is that pallet of product there? Why is there trash all over? Like we would, there were so many phone calls coming from us and we would do, um, after action reports and we used to send them out to the whole department saying hey 12 main productions so our video our video team hey guys y'all left this this and this out um but nine times out of ten our own section in that report was the longest because we knew okay that's broken that's fixed why yeah. did we leave that out no 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 like we took notes and we made ourselves very visible mm -hmm. and we held a very very high standard <laughs> of keeping everything straight, clean, and straight. So yeah, have to do. So you have to do because when people come to games, they, that's the expectation. There's yeah. people, and we all forget there's people behind that. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, kind of want to talk about your career. You know, you obviously a lot of what you've done has been at Texas A&M and staying mm -hmm. within Texas. How mm -hmm. has being flexible to move out to California? How did that help you in your career? It was, it was really exciting. So I loved that because um, where I am personally in life, I was, I had the ability. So I was like, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, nothing, nothing and no one is holding me back. Um, now did people enjoy my decision? Some people didn't, <laughs> but <laughs> I was very excited um, to one, take what I've learned over at that time, the last five years, how can I help someone else? Um, what can I impart on the next, the next school I'm at, the next facility, the next uh, company, you know, like what can I do? Um, so I was very excited to come over to Stanford. It was really awesome. And just seeing it, it really, it, it just changes how, again, it changes how your mind thinks. So 
similar to when I went to UTSA, I had to rethink the way I wanted to approach um, fixing something. And then I came to a and Okay. I still had to rethink because there was only so many of us. Mm-hmm. Then I went to Stanford and I was like, whoa, like you don't worry about event things. Okay. I got to like <laughs> focus. Like Dan would be like, Caitlin, you don't need to be at the game. I'm like, I know, but I don't know what else to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do I do? I am, I am, I've been like close brainwashed of like, this is what we do. Mm-hmm. And so it, it, made me it challenged me okay if i don't need to focus on an event like fully focus on event things anymore okay now i have my job my job is facilities how can i make my job that much better so it 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 kind of it kind of teed me up for coming back here honestly without even knowing uh without even knowing that it was going to happen mm-hmm. and so uh it was being being flexible to move is good, but you also have to know that it's the right decision for you. Mm-hmm. Um, like if if I had no intention of being at Stanford for the short amount of time that I was, it actually was uh, very very hard to make the decision to come back. Um, so much so I was I was like racking my brain. It was not okay, uh-huh. <laughs> not okay, um, because like in to me it's like okay. I've like when I dive into a new role, like I'm I'm diving into it. Like you're getting all of me, you're getting it all. Like I I want to give you my best. And so um leaving it it did hurt because I was like, man, we have all these things that are going to happen. So like talking to Lane and Blaze mm-hmm. uh, and Leisha and then you um mm-hmm. uh, on and Stefan. Stefan, he said yeah. side note, Stefan, really quick. I know nobody on this in this class knows who Stefan is, but uh, he, Stefan's one of our building managers here. Yes. Yes. He is amazing. I yeah. loved him. Um, he showed us what the Vaptor was for tennis to clean the courts. Oh, amazing. he was so excited about that. Oh my gosh. We're going to, we're going to get more. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. I've, I've tried the tennis courts with him. Uh, yeah. He loves that thing. Class. If you ever have to uh, drive tennis courts, you need to get a Vaptor. Look into it. It's great. It, it basically <laughs> sucks up all the water all of it yeah. sorry side change <laughs> but like now I, I get to see what's going on over there I'm like oh, I remember when we were talking about mm-hmm. uh moving beach like building softball a new clubhouse and new locker rooms okay then what happens after that okay you move you move softball then you move beach volleyball okay then what happens to that building okay does that building go away I don't know okay well then you got to move like learning how another school had to think through that process was really cool mm-hmm because not everybody thinks the same no and that, so, that's the beauty of when people move around and people move around all the time in this industry yes. like I, I moved twice in the last year yeah so for for my job it was mm-hmm. my third full-time job after college you know it's it, it's not uncommon for people to have that no. um, and you pick up different things here and there like there's stuff I still use from this day when I was part part-time at Drexel's mm-hmm. And that was come on eight years ago. Doesn't it hurt to say that sometimes? Yeah, it does. It's maybe <laughs> think <laughs> maybe think I finished college about eight years ago. Yeah. Um, and so then I used it at UC Davis, and then I took what I used at UC Davis and took it to Wagner, and then stuff at Wagner that I use here. But yeah. and it, it's fine. Like it doesn't matter the size of the school; you're still have the same issues. You still it's same you still stuff. The same problem. You know, a tennis court's a tennis court, no matter yeah. where you go. It's just and something. And something that um, Scott has reminded us a lot is like, no matter what, because like to your point, a tennis court is a tennis court, no matter what, the game will be played with or without people. Yeah. You know, and as as we saw in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. That was wild. Um, I guess talking about different facilities and where we've been, what are some of the more memorable facility related experiences that you've had? Can also be on the event, the event side too. It's both. Okay. (laughs) It's both. Um, so it was 2018. Yeah. 2018. I think Alabama. I did. I had it. Those years ran together really fast. Uh, I think we were playing Alabama, and it was home football game. 
And all of a sudden, like I, I texted my parents and I, like, hey, I'm going to come see y'all really quick. Cause like, I, I never got to sit in my seats. So I, cause I was always walking yeah. and um, I saw like on my way to go see them, I started getting calls left and right on the radio, on my phone. I got text messages. Like my, I am blowing up because people were like, Hey, we don't have water in our suite anymore. Hey, this toilet's not running. Hey, this happening. And we like, as you listened over the radio and your phone calls and everything, you just saw it happen from top to bottom. It started at the top, yeah. all the way to the bottom. We had no water in the stadium. Oh my God. None. But what happened during that time, it was our, uh, our hotel was getting built and the, the water main was shut off, uh, not knowing connection. it connected to the stadium. Oh my gosh. That was uh, the biggest mess I've ever seen. And this is a lovely game, right? Oh, it's a lovely game. No, it's, the right, game. it's right during the middle. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, middle. Mid, straight up middle and in the sec we don't have a readmittance policy like you leave you leave so like game management like you again i could hear everything going on game manager was like okay this is what we're going to do we're going to allow people to leave go across the street to use the restrooms if they need to because we just couldn't yeah but it then then seeing people don't care sometimes and it's mm-hmm. like i'm sorry sir ma'am you can't can't come in and they're like, nope, get out of my way. And I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> like, that was crazy. So what what that triggered for us was, okay, we have this problem. How do we prevent it? Like, the question was, how do we prevent it from happening again? That very next week, following the game, we did a super flush. And we learned about that in school. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you go through once a year. No, no, no. We did full-blown, this involved every single custodial staff. We brought in people from across campus, maintenance, our staff, like our students made it a game. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, who can flush the most toilets? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was great. Um, How many toilets are in the stadium? I used to know that number because I had to count them. I don't remember anymore <laughs> because uh, during COVID, we had to go back and, and see how many we had to yeah, take away and turn off. Take away, yeah. If, if I... If I had time, I'd search that document. I know it's there. It's got to be hundreds. Oh, it's insane. It's close to, yeah, uh, thousands. Close to a thousand. Wow. Close to a thousand. I mean, yeah, if you think about it, that's 1% of people using the restroom at one time. Exactly. And so from there, we did the super flush. And then then we didn't do it mid-season because we were technically mid-season. But then the following year, we we're like, okay, we know in August, we have to do a super flush this close to game one gives us X amount of time to still make repairs if we need to. And then as the years have gone on, we found out how can we make that process quicker? Start turning on all the sinks in the, uh, in the stand. Is this a waste of water? Yes. Mm-hmm. We know that. Yeah. But we also, we also make up for it on the back end. Like we, we, we have a whole uh, energy and, and sustainability program that we're going through. And so we know, okay, is this one time, how, how much is this one time going to affect us later mm-hmm. on? Yeah. Um, because the city, because the stadium sits pretty dormant. For the most part. Or at least the, a good, like you might have other events, but it's nothing compared to having 150,000 people in the general vicinity. Exactly. Exactly. So like postseason, we turn everything off. We go through every restroom, we turn off like, okay, how can we we winterize the stadium? Okay, mm-hmm. so we turn off water in the south end, the uh, top deck. Like we we have a whole now we really have it honed in. Cody has done a really great job at that to uh, really know. Okay, in this part of the stadium, we are turning this off, this off, and this off, but not this. Mm-hmm. So that's where we kind of get it back because mm-hmm. then people can't just go wander the stadium. Yeah, and then you're wasting water and you have no idea. Exactly. You have leaks. But um, that was one thing where it was like, this happened. How do we prevent it from happening again? Mm -hmm. Immediate action. And then that's just honestly made us better each year. We do find those problems Mm -hmm. and and we're able to get to them. So like that's, that was a really messy situation. And I will never forget that. Um, Quite literally. One that, go ahead. Literally messy. Mm -hmm. I could use other words, but I see (laughs) this best one right now. Yeah. (laughs) 
Um, one that is semi event related, but it affected the facility was uh, we have this um, student led event on campus called Big Event. And it's literally one of the biggest volunteer um, public service um, opportunities throughout throughout the city. So like groups of students will go through and, hey, you need your lawn mode. Got it. You need something built. Got it. Paint. Like you name it, people sign up for it. And then students just show up and you get things done. Wow. Um, so it's really cool. It's a really cool uh, service uh, opportunity. But they wanted to... Uh, shoot fireworks from the top of the stadium so we're like okay great figured all that out got it um so the way that pyros got up to the top deck was went up one of our elevators well we only have three elevators that actually expose to the outside mm -hmm. so they used one of them one of the smaller ones and uh came down event went off great it was fine i come in on monday i'm like this is great i'm just beep bopping around and i go up to use that elevator and i'm like there's water everywhere. What what's going on? Um, it flooded the whole whole shaft from level seven down, flooded because we did not put the flood barrier back on after an event. So they used that elevator get up onto the concourse, and at the end of the event, the flood barrier was go back on mm -hmm. because the water slopes slopes into the elevator shop so uh learned my $61,000 mistake and never have done it again <laughs> yeah. so like every even if you're doing an event it impacts your day-to-day -day. it mm -hmm. impacts the facility like everything revolves around how the building runs mm -hmm. for sure and so, these sort of repairs do not come cheap no Especially no and I've never lived it down room. yeah mm -hmm. you can't and even though it wasn't me like it was my student so like I owned their mistake mm -hmm. and oh my gosh, she felt awful. And I'm like, stop. It's fine. Like yeah. I'm not, you're not getting fired. Mm -hmm. And our department head is not, he's, he's not obviously not happy, but yeah. he's like, I know things happen. Mm -hmm. And so having those types of leaders around us really helped mm -hmm. not to say that, Hey, let's go do that again. We can go break whatever we want. It's like, no, 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 no. Be really, really mindful, mm -hmm. but also know that you're going to mess up. Yeah. That's hard to take sometimes. Yep. And, and the biggest thing is as long as nobody gets hurt, mm -hmm. it, it's not the end of the world. Right. You no, know, no one got hurt. No structures were permanently damaged. Everybody's right. okay. Um, yep. It's it's like the same with the natural disaster. You know, no one, exactly. no one gets hurt. It's mm -hmm. everything's repairable. You can't replace right. it. You know. Right. Um, so it's that's one thing that. I know it was the, the forefront whenever something really bad happens and people around us, was anyone getting hurt? And if no one got hurt, okay, let's move on to see how we can keep everyone safe. Right, right. Um, another question I have. So your career has been solely in college athletics. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on working in professional or municipality, you know, like mm -hmm. rec leagues, um, what, just minor league even, you know, what, what's your thought on, on that? So when I was in college, um, I also was an intern for our Convention and Visitor Bureau in okay. town. Um, so it was Bryan College Station Convention and Visitor Bureau. It was a very long acronym, <laughs> BCS CVB. It was a lot. Um, and I actually kind of got to see that side. I got to see the event side of it, um, of the municipality facilities and running. We ran uh, the Adidas seven on seven football tournament That's and um, like seeing how all, all that gear came in. Like it was really, really cool. Um, and but then the people you need to know, like every each one of those groups, college, professional, minor municipality like you need to know people mm -hmm. so no matter which which area you're in you need to you need to be best friends with your custodians you need best friends with your maintenance guys mm -hmm. does that mean you get along all the time no but it does mean that like you all have each other's backs so uh that was really cool for me to to experience that um personally i've i've just always been drawn to college uh college sports more um i do love going to a good a good uh professional game because then like going into those stadiums like my eyes are looking at totally different things my you friends see everything from a whole new vantage point oh my gosh yes uh my friends laugh like are you going to be working no are you going to be looking at things 
maybe yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. But it's so cool because like, what can I learn from the professionals? What can I learn from the minor league people? Like um, Scott, my boss, he used to work in minor leagues. So he brings things that he learned in, in those times. And like, you know, too, Michael, that like, you have to, you have to do a lot with a little, yep. you know, professional stadiums, they can do a lot with a lot, mm-hmm. you know? So what, what can we learn from each other? I think that the, that each area, uh, you, you have to have a love for it. If you are, and this is something that uh, I've kind of gathered throughout the years and, and talking to other people too, if you're doing this job for the money, you're in the wrong job. Mm-hmm. because each one of these areas professional college minor municipality like all those areas it's we in facilities get get the grunt of it all but we also are asked to save the day yeah. a lot yeah. so if if you're just driving to make sure people have a good time and that they're doing it safe in a really cool place that's you know fun to be at and you're doing your job Mm -hmm. um so like personally i i've just kind of narrowed in on uh, college athletics uh, but i've also kept in my head that um probably whenever i have kids someday i I may not be able to do this for long Mm -hmm. you know so what would i do then maybe i go run um a whole high school or a whole um isd a school district maybe Mm -hmm. i'll go run a school district and um manage their all their buildings from elementary to high school I don't know um but I I do know that I I love being in the college athletics because like you have different levels of competition like even within our own office like we we compete with each other all the time but it's 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 good competition it's healthy Healthy. it's healthy like yeah like oh dang it they got to it before I did Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna get to it before they do. <laughs> like, exactly. like, like how, but then we're always we're always helping each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just I think you just need within any of those areas, people are needed, mm-hmm. no matter what. But if you have a passion for professional sports, go oh. go do it. If mm-hmm. you have a passion for minor league, because like that experience is so crazy, it's so awesome. I love going to minor league games. I do. <laughs> they're, 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 they're they're inexpensive, and you get like even better experience than exactly yeah. exactly it's great and probably most of them have just come out of college so yeah. you got the same level of competition too um but then like if you have a love for your city like go whatever it need, whatever you can do to make that better like, that's what it needs to be exactly it's yeah. awesome want to want to touch on networking you, you just mentioned it. how how important is that in this industry extremely important <laughs> Um, one thing here at AM, uh, if you're a student that they will just drill into your head is networking. Um, I was on flight right after, uh, I graduated high school. I was on flight after I graduated high school and I was in the back of the plane and I just look around and I'm with my mom. I go, mom, those are all Aggies. Like all, I didn't even have to take a close look at their ring. Mm-hmm. And I saw like, that's, that's a big thing here is to have a, is to have your school ring. Mm -hmm. um and so just then I chatted it up with one of the girls I'm still Facebook friends with her and (laughs) 12 years later woof (laughs) 12 years later (laughs) yeah you know um like we keep up with with each other so that's just like a personal networking but then throughout the whole university like I uh the guy that runs our uh rec pools I worked with him at UTSA Mm -hmm. so like he came over here so Mm -hmm. like him and I have a really good working relationship um there's some of the professors that I had when I was here as a student. Um, I go to them all the time, like, Hey, what do you need? And then they'll say, Hey, can we come do a tour? Can you come speak? Like, what can we do to help these students get the experience and understand like, what is it like real life? Um, But then just outside of A&M, the people I've met at all these schools, like uh, class, I met Micah at chaos. (laughs) And so that was really cool. Like those, Chaos is a is a professional um, retreat. Basically, it's really really fun. Uh, if you can ever get into it, you should. Yeah, it's an, it's an amazing conference. Yes, it was great. It was great. we had a good time. Yeah, I broke a finger like the last time I went. Oh really? <laughs> oh yeah, another story for another time. <laughs> um, but uh, we 
wherever you go, you're going to meet somebody. How can that one person like impact, not just you, but how can you impact them? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, the, the contractors I work with, like I, I use all of them from all the years that I've had. Um, if, uh, what were we, we were talking with, uh, oh, two of our facility assistants, um, have left here and are now working at Duke. There's sometimes we're like, Hey, do you remember when yeah. they're like, yeah, but we also do this here at Duke. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, great. Yeah. And we just constantly go. We have a guy that was a facility assistant at TCU. We have a couple of students that are in Colorado. We have one that's over at uh, USC. Like once, once you all kind of disperse, then you have that web. Okay, mm-hmm. what, what do we need to do now? How, does, how is this person doing like there were so many times when I was at Stanford, I was just calling everybody like, yeah. Hey guys, what are y'all doing over there? Mm-hmm. How's that going over there? Like it, it is, uh, more of like a support system. Mm-hmm. And, and cause again, like we said earlier, we are doing the same thing, no matter where we go. Yeah. You're doing the same job. Tennis court's a tennis court. Tennis court's a tennis court. Building is a building. Office is an office. Like that. It, it just, it's the environment you're around then. Um, so I, I highly value my network. Um, I still talk to a ton of people over at Stanford still. Um, I have some friends over at LSU. I talk to our facility assistant at USC, um, again, our guy at TCU, our people at Duke. Um, I mean, we, there's something somebody else is doing better, no matter what level of school you're at. If you're, if you're at a JUCO or if you're at a D1, D2, D3, and any of those levels, mm-hmm. somebody's doing something better. And it doesn't matter. Like we love going to do facility uh, site visits. Mm-hmm. Love doing it. Oh my gosh, we have so much fun. And it's, we just kind of get to nerd out on somebody else's facility. But then it's like, oh, hey, get a picture of that. We're gonna, and we talk through it with, with that person. Um, so again, like I, we did the security shift. We, I mean, we condensed it to what makes the most sense here, but I'm like, oh, that was a really good thing. And it actually helped us a lot as a facility manager, because then we knew what was going on when we weren't there. Yeah. You know, that's just a very small example, but um, for, for the most part, if, uh, what, what's the quote? You're, if you think you're the smartest person in the room, you're not. Yeah. Um, it's something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like that, that's how you need to view your network. Like you're never the smartest person in the room. Someone else is doing something better, but then how can you learn from them? So I highly value my network. <laughs> it's important. It's important. Yes. I mean, we, we are and not yeah. just, and not just like D1 to D1. Again, like, yeah. like it's, it's across the board. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, like you and I both are not where we are now, if not for our network, you know, right. Because the beauty of the network is, it's very rare that someone in your network is going to hire you. It's more mm-hmm. someone in your network knows someone yes. who is going to hire you or helps yes. put in a good word um, to help you get hired. You know, that's how I got my career started with mm-hmm. a mutual connection with the hiring manager. And it took off. You know, you worked as a student at, at AM mm-hmm. and knew people, you know, it, yep. it helps. So um, and it's one, one thing I always, I always tell people and someone told me is with your network, Keep in touch, just a, a hello or a happy holidays message yep. in there. The only time they hear from you shouldn't be when asking for a job or help right. to find a job. Um, yeah, a little little hello, hope you're well, goes a long ways because you know yeah. them in the future. Yeah. 100%. Like how many times I hear Scott say like, oh, I called this person. Oh, I called this person. Oh, I called this person. I'm like, bro, like what, what is your, if you had a Rolodex, what does that look like? Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> the, None of these kids are going to know what a Rolodex is. <laughs> Rolodex is basically like your, your, Rolodex. Your, con, your contact list and your phone, but in like card form. Card. Yeah. Uh, I guess kind of ending this conversation, what is a piece of advice that you have for someone looking to get into this side of the industry, especially a, a college student? So one thing that Jesus, who's one of, uh, one of the guys that reports to me, but again, he's my coworker. Like we work together, we're doing the same stuff. Um, one thing that he has actually challenged our whole department, and I love this because it's it's him leading from where he's at. So he's leading up. Um, he's not just being like, oh, I can't make a difference. His what he's been doing for the past, I don't know, two, three years now, 
um, he, he does cold calls and he's like, Hey, or cold call email. Like, Hey, I uh, just wanted to touch base. I saw you do this, wanted to introduce myself. I, that's what he did. And he has made so many connections. So whenever we went to CEFMA last year, another, another conference, like the people he was able to touch base with, and then they introduced him to somebody else. Like, don't be afraid to make those cold calls. Like if, if you're like, man, I wonder how that person made it. Like ask the question. And that kind of leads into not just like, ask people like what they've done or don't be afraid to reach out to people, but never stop asking why. Mm -hmm. Um, Because once you stop asking why you kind of, um, not to like, not to get to where you're just like spinning your wheels, but ask the why so you can get to the root of the problem Mm -hmm. Um, within like facilities or just working with somebody. Um, if, If like right now we have a keyless issue, right now it's a live example two of our entrances fingerprints not working and we're like okay we're searching for everything okay but why okay we're gonna go look for this okay now why okay now we're gonna go here okay now we're gonna call that person and ask him why because they run the program like it's going to get you down the road people are gonna get irritated and that's fine but are you trying to better yourself but not only better yourself are you trying to get your department to where they actually function well. That's the goal. Like to try to eliminate the issues and to try to solve the problems. That's the reason for the why. And then have your own why. It took me a long time to to understand the value of it. And I I really wish that I would have had that mentality sooner. Um, My why is like the people that I work with is really awesome. I'm extremely, extremely blessed. To, to work where I'm at, but I also want to be an example for others in this industry, like for other ladies in this industry. Like that's not many are in my my position running facilities, especially to this to this caliber. And so it's like, what can I do for them? But then what can I do for each person in this office? Um, I also want to be a great example for my niece and nephews. Like I want them to be like, man, Aunt KK, she did that. And that was really cool. I wonder why. And then we go down those whole trail of things as they get older. Like people are my why. And so the the more I can help them is is uh, is my goal. Awesome. It's all about the why. Exactly. <laughs> all about the why. <laughs> Kaylin, thank you very much for taking the time. I really do appreciate you speaking to the class. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'll post Caitlin's LinkedIn. Um, give her a follow. Feel free to connect with her. Uh, she'll be happy to do an informational interview, I'm sure. Yeah, go ahead and share my my work email as well. Perfect, we will do. Awesome. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. It was awesome.